Have you ever wondered what is the most upvoted question on Stack Overflow? The same place where your questions get downvoted to oblivion? Well, let's have a look at this question with 26,330 upvotes and 1.7 million views. So what does this question say? In this question, the author created an array of 32,000 elements and then filled it with random values from 0 to 255. And forget the sorting for a moment. Now, we are timing this nested loop. And what we are doing here is uh, iterating through every element of the array. And if that element is greater than 128, we add it to our sum and we do this 100,000 times. Now, what we notice here is that normally this runs in about 11.54 seconds. However, if we were to sort this array beforehand, it takes only 1.93 seconds. How does that work? Well, the culprit here is this line of code. This branch is the culprit. So what's happening here is this thing called branch prediction misses. The CPU tries to predict the branch, but uh, it fails. To understand it more properly, let's have a look at how our CPU executes code for a moment and then we'll understand how it works. Okay, so let's understand how CPU executes the code. Now let's say these are the instructions i1, i2, i3 and so on. The way CPU executes them is first of all it fetches them. So fetch. Then it decodes the instruction so that it can understand it. And then it executes them. Now these things happen separately. So this entire process is a whole pipeline where every step, so step 1, step 2 and step 3 happen independently. Now the benefit of having this pipeline is that once instruction 1 has been fetched and goes to the next part that is decode, now fetch is free. So it can fetch the next instruction i2. And now by the time i1 will move to the execution, this i2 will move to the decode. So in this way, it speeds up the actual processing time of these instructions. So now let's see what happens in branch prediction. So let's say this is a line of code. So if condition, then do something, otherwise do something else. Okay. So it is instruction 1, instruction 2, instruction 3, instruction 4, instruction 5, whatever. I mean, then this is not exactly correct, but I'm just giving in a high, high level overview. So by the time i1 is, is going to be executed, i2 must be fetched and then decoded. And then once i1 has been executed, now we know where to jump, whether to i2 or whether to i4. But now the computer does not know which one it had to fetch. So it in advanced fetches, let's say I2. Now if condition was true, then the prediction was correct. And now we can save a lot of time by directly executing this instruction. However, if the prediction was wrong, we will have to flush the pipeline, which takes quite a lot of time, like 15 to 16 CPU cycles, and then move on to the correct instruction fetch it decode it and execute it so you s so now you can see what is the cost of a branch misprediction and now our cpu is actually very advanced it can do a lot of branch predictions and if those happen very well the execution would be very fast however if it happens slowly it would be very slow not very slow but much slower like you saw in the previous case now how exactly was sorting helping it Let's see. Now notice that this if condition is unpredictable because all the data is random. And so this will be true with about a 50% chance. So this is totally random. There can be basically no prediction. However, when it is already sorted, the way in which this line will be executed will produce results like false, 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 and then true, 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 true. Because the sorted elements, let's say 1 to 50, they are smaller than 128. And once it reaches greater than or equals to 128, it will always be true. And so CPU can do a much better branch prediction. And because of better branch prediction, we will have 
a lot less CPU pipeline flushing and due to which we get this speed up. You can read more in the Stack Overflow answers. Everyone gives their own explanation and they are very useful to learn from. Also, there is this book written by this person, Slot in on Code Forces, uh, Algorithmica. This is from where I learned about this. It is a very great resource to understand these kind of things. Uh, not to very high depth, but uh, to a very good depth. So as you can see, this is the CPU pipeline as explained by him. A, B, C are the instructions. A is fetched at cycle 1, B is fetched at cycle 2, C is fetched at cycle 3. And then there is decode and execute and all that. Now he also has his own case study of the same situation in the chapter 3.2. Now here he has similar code except he is controlling the probability by which the branch has to be selected by variable p and then he has plotted what is the cycles per iteration based on the probability of branch and as you would expect when the probability is very less or very high then it is predicted much better and so the iteration cycles per iteration is less however at something like 50 it is the most because then it is mispredicted much more and now here as you can see there is a little bump in the near of 90s and the reason is that uh, now although pretty much all the branch predictions are being correct the cost that is being accumulated is coming from the plus operation so that is kind of overpowering the advantage we get from branch prediction so that's why benchmarking is really the way to go for optimization of code and not just looking at it yourself. So anyways, that was branch prediction. Now you might be wondering, okay, that's great. How can I take advantage of this? First of all, you should avoid branches because they can be expensive. However, if you have a branch and if you know that some branch is very likely, you can actually tell your compiler that uh, it is likely by something like this. I think this is only a C++ 20 feature, but there's other ways to do the same in other versions as well. So you can give a hint to the compiler to tell if a branch is more likely or unlikely, and then it would generate the assembly that will be much better to predict. Anyways, uh, like I said, you should try to avoid branches uh, and how to do that. I mean, it is arguable if you should try to avoid or not, but I prefer avoiding because let me show you this case here so you can avoid that branch by converting it into an algebraic expression where you are multiplying this ai you wanted to add this ai in case ai is less than 50 so we multiply this by a boolean expression if it is true only then we will add otherwise we will add zero and so we can take advantage of this to do the same if condition but without any branch and uh, as you can see with the same plot the cycles per iteration remain the same and for the most part it is better and also there's another added advantage that it, it can get auto vectorized if you enable that however branched code is not vectorizable so that's another benefit and so if you can you can prefer to do branchless programming that is pretty good as well so what you can take from this video is that cpu does branch prediction right because of the way the pipeline cpu pipeline is and uh, you can take advantage of that and tell the compiler that yeah this branch is more predictable that this branch is more likely or less likely which will help you to optimize your code or you can directly remove the branch using these expressions and uh, that will also help you to generate a very fast code and this can also get vectorized. If you don't know what auto vectorization is, you can check out my pragmas video, uh, sorry, bad practices video. The pragma section has that explanation. So you can check that out. I will make a video on auto vectorization and SIMD vectorization later. But uh, for now, you can check that out on Google. All the resources are available everywhere. With that said, hope you liked this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.